No, Karl Marx was the false prophet of the book of Revelation. Is that true? Can it be? How can I say Is no my anti communism justified through scripture? So you have a <laughs> communist manifesto, like what, four or five years? After Joseph Smith is killed in Carthage, mm. um, you literally have you have Karl Marx getting kicked out of a pub in France the same year that Joseph Smith is killed in Carthage. I don't trust I conservative movie critics anymore because now any movie with a Mexican or a woman, they're like, "This is so woke." I think the false religion set up by Karl Marx is this economic sort of deal where your salvation becomes an economic thing rather than an actual thing where God is involved. Uh, communism, it gets rid of all of that. Right. Forget that the, the, the 20th century was the bloodiest, bloodiest oh, well. human century of all time. We descended into cultural Marxism's worst crime Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I'm your host, Cardin Ellis. I'm joined in the studio by Kuwaiku L, as well as Brad Whitbeck. And back by popular demand, and also because he had a layover in LAX, we've got Sean <laughs> Bailey here to talk to us about a question that has been lingering since we last spoke. Sean. Yes. We spoke about um, it was the first resurrection. We also had a brief conversation about uh, other symbols in the book of Revelation, but we have yet to pin something down. I have a nagging suspicion that this is true. Correct me if I am wrong, that Karl Marx was the false prophet, not the anti. No, he was the no. Karl Marx was the false prophet of the book of Revelation. Is that true? Can it be? How can I say Is no my anti-communism justified through scripture? How can <laughs> I not? I don't think I can say no to that, honestly. Well, that's funny. So now this is actually a theory. Um, I don't get these things out of uh, nowhere. Um, I found on Reddit the font of all knowledge. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like I, I've heard a lot of uh, arguments about Karl Marx being the false prophet of the book of Revelation because there is very interesting parallels to the restoration. Joseph Smith had the first vision in 1820. He ends up forming the church in 1830. While he is, you know, by 1840 meeting with small congregations of people to discuss the eternities and form the church and, and begin the missionary work and of the gospel. having the school of the prophets. Exactly. What was going on, Brad, simultaneously? Over... In France, the devil's counterfeit of America, you have, I'm just kidding, yeah. but, um, <laughs> you have uh, Karl Marx is having his meetings with his buddies and they are forming communism. So as right. we know, flies are the counterfeit of honeybees and moths are the counterfeit of butterflies. Uh, are you saying Satan's counterfeit of America was France? That's <laughs> I mean, red, white, and blue, right? And like, the, and the, you know what I'm saying? And the, um, no stars. And though. that no Karl stars. Marx is the counterfeit of the Restoration. You know who said that? Ironically, all the libertarian Mormons that I know. Uh, do you remember <laughs> Wait, who's when? The, who's the one guy who made that Book of Mormon movie? Who's really intense behind the camera? Oh, Darren Southam. Oh, Darren Southam. 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 Did, yeah. He had a whole video about this, didn't he? Did he really? Yeah. Well, you guys are forgetting Richard Stafford, one of the heads. Oh, of yeah, the, he was the one who told us, "Look, yeah. this is the counterfeit, right?" And and so well, having he said Shana. that communism was the counterfeit of the restoration, which inherently the logical conclusion would have to be now that we got Sean Bailey here, who's the, uh, you know, the the maestro of the book of Revelation. OK, uh, we could by default conclude that the logical conclusion of this, you know, thought pattern is that Karl Marx is a false prophet of the book of Revelation. How do you feel about that, dog? How do you feel? Okay, so there is counterfeits for every single thing in the book of Revelation. You have four mm. angels from God, then you have directly afterwards four angels from the devil, right? Oh. You have the oh. lamb and you have the dragon. Those are dichotomies. Oh, okay. So when we have the true prophet, we're going to have when we have the false prophet, we're going to have a true prophet. When we have a true prophet, we're going to have a false prophet. So during the time of Joseph Smith mm -hmm. in the 1840s or late 1830s, when they're having, like you said, they're having the school of the prophets, yeah, literally setting up the precursor of the temple, what's going on on the other side of the world? You've got these guys gathering in a pub. Going in woke. France. A pub in France is a pub even in France better is like as the, a counterfeit. Exactly the opposite <laughs> of the school of the prophets, right? Mm -hmm. A pub in France. 
Um, you there, can't make this stuff up. Like I am laughing because it's funny, <laughs> but it's like if you look at what communism did in the 20th century to America, like and how and bloody everywhere it was, else. Uh, yeah, it just like you can't make it up that within what was it three years of the restoration, Satan's having his false restoration in a pub in France like literally on you could drill a hole through New York and you probably end up at that pub in France that's right you know so you have a communist manifesto like what four or five years after Joseph Smith is killed in Carthage Mm. Um, you literally have you have Karl Marx getting kicked out of a pub in France the same year that Joseph Smith is killed in Carthage Dang. Oh, I, I really? never think of these guys as contemporaries, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's fascinating to look at that timeline. And I, I think this is really fascinating to consider Karl Marx as the false prophet talked about in Revelation because of the gospel that he brings, right? Yeah. The way that he what he brings and teaches is so devoid of a God. It yeah. is an economic plan of salvation, right? So let me play devil's advocate to you right now. I hear a lot of people say like, well, it can't be him because he wasn't a prophet. He wasn't a religious figure. What would your rebuttal to that be? I know what mine is, but what would you think to that? There is no ideology that is not a religion. I don't think that you can have an ideology that is not in some way religious. Now, there's a lot of people that say, oh, I'm atheist. I'm atheist. They worship something. Yeah, just go to the Apple store the day before a new iPhone comes out and tell me that there's not a secular religion Mm, out there. Exactly right. You know, like when Star Wars comes out with its eighth failure, there's still people lining up to get it. Or fedoras. Religious devotion. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. People still buying fedoras or YouTube atheists. Who's that one guy that, like, the the long, he looks like Rasputin? Uh, He's Jimmy Snow. He's mean. He's no, no, no. He's on TikTok. He's always mean. Sam Harris. Aaron Ra. That guy. Oh, you ever know, looked up that guy? Is. No. That guy, it looks like Rasputin, but like with the Wendy's five for five. And he is just <laughs> like that guy, fedora, every fedora in America he owns. Oh my gosh. That's well, funny. So you just have a deep aversion to fedora wearing. I honestly think atheism would be more popular if they got so, the aesthetic. They don't have a good aesthetic. There's no, because religion creates beautiful architecture. So and like, why are you hating can't. on Indiana Jones? Like, what What do you, what, what's wrong with Indiana Jones? That's well, not a fedora. Not a fedora. That's it's not. A, that's like a cowboy hat. I've been lied to this whole time. No, also, so Indiana you Jones know what a fedora is. is right? Oh, now I got to go searching something. Remember, real who's time. that goofy? I won't hesitate because I'm yours. What's that guy? Uh, Mraz, Jason Mraz. He's got the 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 the, the like fedora, straw fedora thing. Yeah, going on. that two th- oh. early two thousands like cool okay, guys okay, kind of okay, pulled okay. it off for yeah, a month, but yeah. just where yeah. the the brim is kind of small. Well, I think right? yeah. no, you might be right though. It's uh, it doesn't maybe, feel like a fedora in Indiana Jones, does it? Because he's tough. Well, he's it's like, a, it's one of the more wide brim ones. We are getting so off track. But yeah, yeah. So look, but here, <laughs> look, that's a fedora. This Clay is Kill. the mark of the beast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mark of the beast on their head is the atheists wearing their fedora. This is the freaking phylactery, whatever it is. <laughs> the, the, the phylactery? The phylactery. It's a fedora. It, it, it's the counterfeit phylactery. It's the fedora. That's funny. So this is the fedora on a model that strangely looks like uh, Henry Cavill or Cavill. I don't know how to pronounce his name. The looks guy like the guy from so- you. Superman. Yeah, more like that, oh, dude. Oh, yeah, it looks like the guy from you. Okay, and then now what we're going to do is I'm actually going to Google in real time. You know, I hate doing this stuff in real time, but it's all go. What kind of hat did Indiana Jones wear? Because there's a specific time. It's called like a field bowler or a field. Oh, my gosh. This nostalgic hat with a flare all of its known, a signature Indiana Jones hat, is a pinch front fedora Ugh, with a gross you. green back. Sean was so right. So you know Sean what? Right. I knew it like but James Bond more. Life. It's, it's a wide-brimmed fedora, isn't it? It's a wide-brimmed fedora. Wow, so okay, actually so both are Indiana Jones fedoras. would witness that God is real and the atheist. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't, it, that's why you don't think it's because it's just different with him. It's that the new one is a counter. <laughs> we all like James Bond more real, anyway. Right? The point is... <laughs> okay. uh, these atheists they just i'm sorry who name name another why are they also goofy who's the guy uh uh uh, i guess i love how our apologetics have descended into like they're just so goofy looking you know (laughs) not all of them but i there is something to it do you know why evangelical they always have the really pretty girl up there sadie robertson the ones who talk like that and then they go and they get more passionate they're all you can't look away because they're like wow you yeah i want you to be my future wife and their charges are cool Religion just they have the aesthetic. Aesthetic's important. A- there's no atheist aesthetic. They they don't have the cute temples or cathedrals or 
yeah. or even the that's cool. True. Like, they, they do. No, it. it's called brutalism. And yeah. it's ugly. It's the and they're straight up concrete. And yeah. just right. concrete boxes. Bluffdale. Yeah, concrete yeah. Boxes and, and it's Bluffdale built by atheists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's a I think the false religion set up by Karl Marx is this economic sort of deal where your salvation becomes an economic thing rather than an actual thing where God is involved there. Eternity doesn't matter in this right. communist view. It's a, your consecration, the law of consecration that we have established, established with Joseph Smith, which involves stewardship and recognizing the way that God made everything. Right. Yeah. With, and, and agency. Yes. And agency with uh, communism. It gets rid of all of that. Right. It, it is like all just a power struggle. Right. Absolutely. hundred yeah. so, uh, percent. And, and this I, for Forgive me, because this is part of history that was not taught well in, like, any of my public schooling yeah. in okay. Houston. We hunted them down. There was a red scare. Weren't, weren't we, like, kicking people's doors down because we thought they were... they The McCarthyism stuff, right? Yeah, we thought that yeah. they were communists, but we, were, we hated it so much, we were like, if it, you even... It, had- if there's... Th- look, there was misbehavior on behalf of the capitalist going after spies that did indeed exist within the U.S. government and many of our cultural institutions. Well, we were going after people for wrong think. Yeah, but, but yeah, it, it in many ways it did descend into wrong think. And I, I think there's a lot of people that have blood on their hands that uh, defied the First Amendment in their search for actual Soviet spies which converted into ideological wrong thing. Yes, you're right. At the Why same are you token, wearing the, the communist colors right now, Carter? Yeah, that's true. Mm, that's <laughs> I'm, like, I'm doing, <laughs> I'm, doing uh, I'm about to break into song for the Soviet. What's the Soviet national anthem? You know it. I we know it from like Rocky IV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. So I'm yeah. about to sing. It is kind of cool. But anyway, um, yeah, that's true. I do that's kind to, of BA, I right? give them credit. Right. Um, so anyway, I was just going to say... Um, that it did descend in wrong thing, but if there's any kind of scoreboard, I'm sorry. The 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 capitalists do not have the body count that the communists oh, do. Oh no, not even you close. Know what I'm saying so. Not even close. When it comes what to mean, pursuing, the rich guys, I know sleep with a lot of women. What did you say? Oh, oh my god! Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Never mind. Was, wrong wrong form of body count. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I, I liked the joke. I thoroughly appreciated it. Joke. It fell a it little bit on deaf ears, but um. What? Anyway. So uh, going back to the most important topic of this podcast, you're right. Indiana Jones hat is indeed a fedora. And ironically, he plays the role of what? An atheistic professor Ah. in Indiana Jones. So your theory that atheists wear fedoras... Holds he, true. He's not still really holds atheistic true because he saw aliens. He's he witnessed all these miracles. I know, but he specifically says, "I do not believe in God." And there's many references to like you know basically God not being real. But then finally, kind of his ultimate character arc. If you watched the Spear of Destiny, which I believe was the last one, the Dial, right? Dial of Destiny. The I haven't Dial seen of, it yet. Don't spoil it. I want to see it. Yeah, I actually haven't seen it. Well, either. you see it in the Isn't trailer. Is he Mormon though? Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones. No, it's a no. creation of George Lucas. Yeah, but there's speculation that he is like LDS. Because I thought he's, he's from, he's from Utah. Utah. Um, and oh, because Indiana yeah. Jones, yeah, like yeah the he's, he's from Utah, and, and he's like in Boy Scouts, and like has like all of hey, these searching well, for buried treasure say, in the 1950s. This guy's Indiana okay, Jones that's, is Mormon that's my for new sure. Favorite theory. Now that's a new podcast. That's my new was favorite George, theory. Was George Lucas? Have, have we you already, not heard this. No, 100. percent Indiana Jones is Mormon. We already made Spencer W. Kimball the inspiration for Yoda. George Lucas's other character. Why not make Indiana Jones a Mormon I thought this kid? was a thing that everyone knew that he was Mormon. Yeah, this Great. Is- now I got to look this up as you guys are talking. Was Indiana Jones as created by George Lucas based upon a Mormon stock character? That'd be super He looks like a Mormon. He, okay. he does. So anyone else who sees people's faces getting melted off by the Ark of the Covenant and does not join that religion yeah. has, has to be Mormon. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying that we have the Ark? <laughs> it's not the Ethiopians. We have the Ark. Is that in the granite vault? In, the Ark. Uh, <laughs> the Ark was the box that contained the brass, the gold plates, right? The Nephite Ark. Uh, if we go with Don uh, right? That would be a good Indiana Jones. Um, Did trying you to find see the, the Babylon plates. Bee? That'd be a good movie. Did you see the Babylon Bee where they made a joke saying in trying to appeal to the Mormon audience, they've come out with a seventh Indiana Jones movie and it was called Indiana Jones and the Quest for the Golden Plates and it had a Mayan period. That would in the be background. amazing. Nice. You didn't see that one? I'd watch no, it. I didn't see Dude. that. Oh, it is, I'm pulling it up. Kathleen That's another Kennedy thing. would shoot that down, but it would be the best movie of the century. Yeah, or else she'd like make all the characters female and then get angry at the one male character that was allowed to speak in the movie. 
You know who is what Kathleen saying? Kennedy? What's going is on? Is that the person who did Kathleen the most Kennedy is in one? charge of all of Lucasfilm. And she's the oh. one that ruined Star Wars. She's the one that ruined <laughs> Indiana Jones. She's basically the person who ruined Disney. Did Indiana Jones get ruined? Are okay, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't see it. I don't trust I conservative movie critics anymore because now any movie with a Mexican or a woman, they're like, this is so woke. Woke has lost its meaning. Dude, I got to tell you. I'm getting annoyed. And it's like, oh, Transformers 5. But guess what? There's a Chinese chick and they go, ah! Look at how woke this has become! Like, really, I I don't I don't the trust past anymore. Three or four times, the past. Looking three at or short Ben Shapiro man, yelling I, about Barbie makes me go, I want to watch him more now. I, I got to tell you, <laughs> I I'm with Quaku on this one. The 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 woke dar of some of these conservative movie critics is really it's broken. Too extreme. It's it's like for example, I when I watched Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and you want to know what? My criticisms of the movie were not sociological. Yes, they had a strong independent female character who was also a complete charlatan who was stealing antiquities uh, and you selling ruined, them. You ruined it for me. Okay. No, this is part <laughs> of the trailer. I'm not ruining it for you. Oh, but she, she's not representing the bright and the beautiful and the great in comparison to the troglodyte knuckle-dragging patriarchy. There was like one or two comments where he said, like, I don't like what you're doing, wombat, because... It, it, he knew this girl in her infancy as the daughter of one of his colleagues okay and she says what you don't like me strong and independent or something but like it wasn't some feminist propaganda film well, there it, were some funny yeah, quips it was like the Batman you're over your uh, skis the, we're not talking about Dial of Death we're talking about Crystal Skull the abomination I don't care. good movie I freaking well, like what? it especially I don't care what the moment says. in which Shia LaBeouf's character joins the monkey swinging through the trees and the monkey that has a <laughs> hairstyle <laughs> similar to his <laughs> swings through. He suddenly learns to swing through the trees like a monkey. And then has a sword fight with a you Russian got, woman. You guys are wrong. It's the when the geese. atom bomb goes off and he hides in a fridge. Yeah! <laughs> that the, is lead, the, greatest. the lead in the fridge would no, no, protect no, him, wait. especially while flying through the air. No, when he falls into the truck and he's like, here we go again, and elbows this guy in this guy and throws <laughs> it is the best movie. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> oh, the aliens. No. I loved that movie. And let me add in oh, one other no. thing. Okay. The Batman with Robert Pattinson. Yeah. I hate superheroes. Robert Phenomenal Pattinson, movie. Yeah. Another example of woke dar going wrong. I actually didn't mind that movie. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. But when uh uh uh, uh the uh, uh what's her name? The bad girl. Uh uh, uh Catwoman. Catwoman. Yeah. yeah. Um, she uh uh when she's like. You're 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 because you're a straight white man or something like that. Yeah. Everyone's like they're pushing woke talking points. Like no, they said what that character would actually say. Like that character was literally fits every definition of like a feminist Buzzfeed type girl. And Bruce, uh, Bruce Wayne is not that. And just because she said a liberal line, people are like, oh, it's a liberal movie. No, like I'm sorry, she's she's actually wrong. In that's the what point. she's yeah. saying, and that's the point of what it, and, and the yeah. characters can't even like now. If a character literally, if a character is liberal itself, they say, "Oh, it's propaganda." I, I it's feel, gone too far. I, I feel I agree with you that, for example, my daughter and my wife they loved uh, the Little Mermaid. And there's times where they butcher and ruin things by reimagining it. And it seems like the legal department as run by woke scolds that just graduated from an Ivy League college said you have to connect these dots and then handed those dots to the artist and said write a script around what le the legal department and HR wants to see on the screen. That's when movies get ruined. But there's other times when it's like called woke and it really isn't. For example, the Barbie movie, you know. When you make fun of the patriarchy in a way that is so over the top, you realize you're doing what's called jumping the shark, where you're showing that the criticisms of that thing are actually not valid by leveling those criticisms in a way that can be only seemed as 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 coherent if they're perceived as comedic or satire, you know, right? or, or satirical. Yeah. Yes. And so it's like there's times where I'm like, dude, no, your guys is woke. Dar is broken. If we've reached a point where we're making fun of patriarchy by openly calling it Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa House and stuff like that, then you know what? Like it shows that the fever has broken and we're actually not giving these ideas credence anymore. Also, and it's what? a fascinating thing in which we have kind of started to see a little bit more going on where like movies are becoming less postmodern, where they just deconstruct everything into like oblivion, yes. which right. by the way, kind of a Marxist ideology in the way. Um, but when you go forward, we're yeah. now getting into like the 
meta modern sort of stuff. Well, can people yeah. also stop being so entitled? Not every movie is for you. I'm seeing 40 <laughs> yeah, year old men true. walk around. I didn't like Barbie. You, good, you weirdo. What you were expecting to, you freak? I don't know. Like, I'm not going to walk into Care Bears the movie as a grown man and go, I'm not enjoying this. Of course, it's not for uh-huh. As long as it's not grooming, you know, like, uh, fine. I, I, yeah, and, and so, I don't know. This is the interesting thing. We're starting to see more meta modern movies in a way that, like, you have actual values coming out of the deconstructions that are happening, yeah. which is a fascinating thing. And I think it's a very mm. good thing because like modernist movies, like uh, I guess Top Gun Maverick would be an example of this. Okay. Sure. They actually have like a good character who like learns a lesson. It's the normal structure we're used to. This Barbie ends up doing something where they play with the postmodern tools, but they bring around an actual modernist idea. So do you see what you did here, Sean Bailey? Here we were starting to talk about is whether whether Karl Marx is the false prophet as referenced in the book of Revelation. You know what I'm saying? And then we descend into that a picture. much yeah. Forget the 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 20th century was the bloodiest, bloodiest oh, well. human century of all time. We descended into uh, uh, cultural Marxism's worst crime. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I liked it. So no, no I, 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 I actually fine. did like that. Movie. Cultural yeah, marks. When the guy gets eaten by ants, you're like, oh. Ah! Actually, I don't even remember any of these things. I have to go back and look at. But here's like, like it's the same level of campy as the rest of the Indiana Jones movies. Oh no. Yeah. The, I gotta tell you one of the best films. Best film, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh no, no, not Raiders. What was the second one? Temple of Doom. No, that was the third one. No, Temple definitely. Doom was the no, Temple Doom's the second one. The third Last one was Crusade Last Crusade is the by far the best. Yeah, Last Crusade. Sorry, yeah, Last Crusade 100%. is my favorite. Last Crusade nah. is my favorite. It's got so, Nazis. Anyway. It's got the the Grail. It's got it's got it all. Uh, so perfect. It's so like here's the, the outro. Movie. Do you guys see the Babylon Bee article? Disney tries to appeal to Angel Studios Mormon audience with Indiana Jones and the Plates of Nephi. And they've got a golden Moroni on top of freaking Tewa Tewa Khan. I would watch you that know? movie. <laughs> That's what movies totally have more. What? Mm. Scores. Yeah. Dude, ever since like Pirates of the Caribbean, that's like the last time that I heard a score that I actually like could repeat. You know, yeah. there's so many recent right. ones where it's just like, like know? Dune. Yeah. <laughs> like Tenet. Where it's like 15 minutes of airships landing to the deepest bass tones and chest, chest compression, chest compressions that villain move. Can think Do you know of? what's going to bring it back, though, is stuff like uh, the Mandalorian is actually helping. That's pretty I awesome. think, to bring back stuff. Yeah. Their their score is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Actually, Nerds. Mandalorian might be the only uh, outlier Nerds. to Nerds. yours. Oh, man, you're missing out. All right. You just well, talked about how much you loved Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. As a kid. And you're calling us nerds. I'm not watching the the Mandalorian oh, as a Okay. Middle. Oh, and I forgot my last thought before we go out here. We do have a hard out, so we're going to have to get out. But my big, my <laughs> only criticism of the last Indiana Jones movie was not wokeism. <laughs> it was just that, man, our CGI is not good enough that we can truly de-age people. And well, we can't it plainly- is. They just don't give the animators the time they need to do it. Okay. And it's super expensive. I get it's super expensive, but you're Steven Spielberg and it's Indiana Jones. You can find the money. I felt they lost money already. Will you just shut up and let I'm me sorry. finish my thought? No, I'm just kidding. So I'm just totally kidding. Um, I, just, uh, I, I felt, ruined my movie. I just, <laughs> I just felt that it became plainly obvious that where they were finding an excuse to retire, should they need Harrison Ford? That's you know, true. To me, it was. A write off, like like in Law and Order, when we know that the guy got picked up for a different TV show. So you're like, ah, he's only got eight episodes left. Some gangster's gonna find him at home, and he'll be dead in a pool of his own blood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It seemed like they were trying to write him off uh, as a character, and he also could not do as many crazy stunts. Uh, though he was just in amazing shape, all things considered, he's what within less than a decade of Russell and Nelson at this point, right? He's old, so, yeah. He's like yeah, 80. yeah. He's he's gangster. Yet another point for Indy being Mormon. Oh, oh, that's true. He's the Abra- aging well. <laughs> He's the Abrahamic aged actor of the restoration. <laughs> you know? Okay, so anyway, let us know where we go wrong, guys. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments. If you have time, please make sure you check us out at wardradio.com. Right.